Hello and welcome to the video. Uh, today we will be looking at a new feature that comes with Unreal Engine 5.2.1. Uh, recently they have added the ability to allow users to, or creators, uh, to implement web widgets in Android uh, applications. Uh, this was a feature that was not available uh, before this update uh, and included with Android is Oculus Quest. Uh, so these work both for regular Android phones as well as Oculus Quest standalone uh, headsets. Uh, this is being deployed to the Quest 2, uh, but I'm assuming it works with the Quest 1 as well, if anybody's still using that. Uh, so there are a couple of requirements uh, that you will need to have set up before starting this. Uh, the first one is you will need to have Android Studio set up to work with uh, 5.2. And if you're unable to get that figured out, you can certainly leave a comment uh, below and I can link a video uh, that I used. <laughs> um, you will also need Unreal Engine 5.2.1 installed uh, to be able to do this. And so I can show you what our end result is going to be uh, for this project here. Uh, what we've got, oh, I do have a video uh, that I'm pulling up now. There we go. And so you can see here, uh, I'm in an Oculus Quest. I've got my headset on, uh, plugging through some video, and that's my portfolio video. And you can see you can click and interact with the web widget as well. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your library and you're going to want to launch Unreal Engine 5.2.1. I'm sure you can see a project in the background already. That's because we are not going to completely launch the project as you'd have to watch my project sh compile shaders and things like that. Um, so once you've got that open, you're going to want to go to games. And for this, we will be using the virtual reality template. This would work with uh, the VRE plugin much better, but that would make for a longer tutorial. Um, so once you've got that there, just go ahead and name your project and hit create. Uh, once that's all loaded up, this is what you'll see here. There have been no changes to this project yet, except one. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come to the plugins and look up web browser and you're gonna to wanna to check this box. Uh, again, I already did this because after doing so, you will have to restart the engine. Uh, once we've got that done, no more restarting engine uh, required for the rest of this. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go over to our game mode right here, and we wanna find our VR pawn. That's the player that uh, is going to be loading in essentially. And we go ahead and open that up. and. The VR pawn now does come with widget interaction components. Uh, and this is what you'll use. It's basically a laser uh, that can detect widgets or whatever you want it to detect. Uh, here it's being used for uh, 3D widgets. Uh, we're actually gonna wanna change that so we don't have to do anything crazy. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and click on under the right motion controller, unless you wanna do this left-handed, you certainly can use the widget interaction left if you want to, or you can do both. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is go over here and we want to change it to a visibility trace. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, we are going to increase the interaction distance. And basically all that is is the distance between your finger and how far uh, the laser can reach. Um, so we've got those two things. Uh, we also want to show debug. And what that does is when you're playing uh, a development build of the application, you can actually see the line trace itself to ensure that it's working, as you can see in that previous video uh, that we went through. So that's the only settings you need to make there. Uh, then you just need to find some space, and it's good to do it down here since this is where all your inputs are already. Uh, so we just go ahead and find space right here, right click, and we are going to use an input that's already uh, mapped. So we're going to look up IA hand point and then we're using the right one. And basically what we're going to use this as is we're going to click the trigger but we're actually simulating a mouse press event. And so what we want to do is when this is triggered we want to press pointer key and it's going to see which widget interaction we want to use. We want to use the right widget interaction component. And so the key we're going to use is left mouse button. 
And for any sort of key press, you need to release the key afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and release pointer key. And we're going to go ahead and set that to left mouse button as well. And once we've got that, we want to go ahead and link that to canceled and completed. So when it's done triggering, or if they cancel the trigger, and that is the only logic that we actually need inside of there. So now that we've got that set up, we want to go back to the content folder. We do not have a UI folder yet, so let's go ahead and create a new folder. Call it UI. You always want to keep your projects as organized as you can. Uh, we want to go ahead and add a widget, which is going to be under the user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, and we're going to call this web widget. Once you got that done, you go ahead and open it up. And we want, the first thing we want to add is a canvas panel. Uh, this allows for basically a backdrop. Uh, it sets it to the 1080 by 1920. Um, once we've got that, we go ahead and just type in web, and then we bring that on top of our canvas panel. Now, one thing you'll notice, if you click the web browser widget, you'll see it's uh, up there in the top left corner. Oh, let's control C that real quick. Uh, oh, it does seem to be giving me a little bit of lag right now. Hmm, okay. So if that ever happens, you can always shut down. Oh, cancel. Okay, it started to work. <laughs> All right, back in business. Um, so if we click on the web browser, you'll see that it's only in this top left-hand corner. It's taking up a small amount of space. So to take, have it take up the entire control uh, canvas panel, what you do is you hover over this, hit Control and Shift at the same time, and then you click it. Once you've got that, it centers it and makes it so it fills. Uh, and then you go ahead and just set your URL. And basically this is going to be the web page that initially shows up. Uh, and for this demo, we're using my portfolio, my work portfolio uh, as a VR developer. And once we're done with that, we go ahead and hit compile and save. Now in VR, uh, you don't necessarily do widgets the same way that you would with uh, flat screen. Uh, with flat screen, there's simple things like add to viewport uh, with a widget. Um, in VR, you don't add things to the viewport because that's on the player's headset and they won't even see it. Uh, so what we do is we create actors that contain widgets. Uh, so we'll call this web widget actor. And you'll notice I also made a sub folder uh, for the UI actors. Uh, so in here, we want to go ahead and click our scene root, and we want to go ahead and add a widget. And that is automatically set at draw size 500 by 500. Since we're using canvas panel, uh, we want to use that 1920 by 1080 ratio. Once we've got that done, that is going to be pretty huge. So we want to go ahead and scale that down to not 0.2. And we want to go ahead and set our widget class to the web widget. And once that's done, you can compile and save. And a couple of things you'll notice in the level. First of all, this player is not positioned appropriately. It's a bad size. Uh, so we go ahead and drag that up a little bit. And anytime you want to drop something directly on the ground, you just press end. So now that is directly on the ground. And we don't want them facing that way. We want to have the web widget this way. So we'll turn them around. And then after you get that done, you just drag your web widget in. W is the short key to get that to pull up like that. Make sure it's working. So go ahead and hit play. And that is all set up. And we can also see the debug of where the controller uh, is hitting currently. Uh, so that looks all good. Um, so the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to make sure you save your map. Go up to platform. Go up to Android. The easiest way to tell if you're set up appropriately is you have allowed SDK 40, 
for R25B and installed our uh, SDK as R25B. Once you've got that checked, you hit patch, package project and that's all it takes. I appreciate you guys taking the time to review the video today. If you have any questions or like I said, if I, any comments or feedback, I'm always open to it. Thanks so much.